Hello everybody, I'm Roadblock. This is a Raid Shadow Legends video. Uh, while we happen to be on the Ninja account right now, this is going to be kind of more of a general overview of kind of what's going on in Raid. A lot of news has dropped. If you haven't already, if you go into the news right now, you can take a sneak peek at what's going on with the Asgard Divide event and the champions that we're getting. Now, I don't have access to um, yet. I'm working on that, by the way, guys, but I don't yet have access to the early um information i would have to go through reddit to get that stuff but i just haven't done that uh not super prepped i'm trying to squeeze this video in a very tight window um it's been a very chaotic day for me but i wanted to squeeze this video in so i could at least touch on a couple of things but the main reason the main motivation for this video is because somebody directly spoke to me in the uh discord right and i wanted to respond to their question but um and also remind you guys that if you are interested in communicating with me the best ways to do that are in my discord in my comment section or come watch me live i try to respond to every comment i actually go out of my way and like you know if i'm really focused in something i try to go back and get every comment if i can i try to be good about that so um while i'm talking about live streams i will be streaming tonight 9 30 p.m eastern standard time I canceled my morning stream um, because, well, quite frankly, I had a really long night trying to make something work that wasn't going to work. I tried to make a video about it, but I was too pissed off at the time, and I ended up, you know, not, not releasing that video. But um, that is a video for a Ninja account episode. This is more of a general overview. So I just wanted to take a look at some of the stuff that's going on right now um, and give you guys insight in general like what what to expect and, and what's going on so first things first i do want to talk about the summon pool event and i'm sure you can tell by my facial expressions i'm not super thrilled about this this is great for for high spenders i i guess it's kind of good for okay it's not good for free to play just not good however the fact that the top end can only get one of these guys now which by the way i'm sorry I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself and not even explaining to you the differences um so with the headline champions you can only get uh one of them i don't know where it says that but i know it says that i already i've seen it before um in other content that I was watching. But yeah, once you get the headline champion, you can no longer get them. Is it? Okay. Well, I forget where it said that, but that is the fact that you can only get one of the unless they changed it and took it out but i mean that's that's a thing that was definitely uh talked about so i might be missing it oh maybe it was in the news hold on hold on hold on sorry 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 uh yeah once during there it is that i knew it was somewhere i knew i read it okay so you can only get that champion once but let's talk about the downsides right now that, that's good right i don't know if you saw i think it was hell hades who pulled like four Tioxes or three Tioxes, something like that, in one of his recent chart pull videos with really insane luck. So now any spender, regardless of how much they spend, can only get one copy of this really good champion. And I think that's kind of okay. I do. Um, it sucks for empowerment and things like that, but, you know, I think it's good in general. Um, what does this mean, though, for free-to-play players? Well, I, I, it's kind of good. Like, I have an, a better odds, I think. I mean, not really. But, um, you know, I I don't know. It doesn't really impact me as a free-to-play player because I still have to hit a 6% before this even becomes a factor, right? So I really don't want to dive into the math. You guys know I hate math. Um, <laughs> somebody guessed in the comments, why do you hate math? And it's like, it's a joke, but also kind of true. Um, anyways... The thing about free-to-play with this new event is that the Mercy system is only limited to this one. I think that's not right. 
I think that is not correct. I personally feel like this makes it better for spenders. Absolutely. And that's a good change. I want there to be a mercy system. If you are looking to spend big money, this is the area that you want to spend. But if you're a conservative player, like you're, you're, you're like a low spender, this still isn't for you because the mercy resets after each week. And I don't think that makes sense. I think this is a fine level of mercy. We talked about this on the podcast, the Knights of Teleria podcast. Go check out Blazin's uh, YouTube channel and uh, you can see where, where people talked about it. But um, I think the change is good to have a mercy system in here, but I don't think it's good. And I, I think it's still counterintuitive to what they're trying to do to have it reset each week. It, it just doesn't make sense to me. Your low spenders won't want to spend here. Your big spenders are already spending here. I just don't know who this is for. Um, I mean, it's for the big spenders because in that podcast, somebody talked about popping 60 of these shards and never getting a legendary. So I'm glad that they did include that for, for you know people that play the game that I like. I want them to be able to not pull a crazy number of shards and get nothing. Like, I get that. But... If, even if you did let it carry over, I don't know that it it hurts anybody. You know, if the Mercy carried over into the next event, I don't know that, that it really impacts anybody. Because you can't, you can't really game your Mercy, right? Like, if you're trying to, well, I want to set my Mercy high so I don't, ha you know, have to do it well next time or whatever. I, I don't know that it works. You know, you... you it's luck, right? You could you could get really lucky and be like, man, I can't build my mercy up. I keep pulling too many legendaries. Oh, darn. You know? So, I don't know. I think it should carry over. I don't think you're necessarily giving an advantage to anybody except maybe low spenders that, you know, they could spend their 20 bucks or whatever their limit, you know, whatever their, their limit is in a month here and then have some mercy to work with next month and eventually have an improved chance of getting one of these really great champions that are hidden behind a blockade anyway. But, but you know, we were not allowed to pull them except during special events. So, I don't know. I'm not a big fan. I'm really not a big fan of the fact that the Mercy... I'm glad they added a Mercy system, but I wish it didn't reset um, on the week. And I think the Mercy system is fine. I mean, from a... I remember saying on, the, on that particular podcast that i felt like it should be you know somewhere similar to what sacred mercy is and it kind of is so sacreds go up two percent each so you can go and that's at 12 this one starts at 20 and goes up three percent each but like you can go really deep i don't know what the math is i'm sure someone will be able to tell me how many but it's it's gonna be 30 40 shards probably um before you even get a guaranteed chance so with really bad luck you could get pretty high i, I don't know i don't know but from a free-to-play perspective which i'm you know i do have a, a an account that i spend money on for my account that i spend money on this is not enticing me to spend money on prism shards it still isn't because i still have to pull a large amount of shards and spend a lot of money to get something decent. Um, and then for my free to play, it's just not, it's the, the same standard. I only get two shots usually to go for it. Uh, that's why I felt like a mercy system would be good, at least for the free to play players to carry over and say, okay, well, at least eventually you'll get something. But theoretically, if you're only pulling two per, per rotation of the summon pools, I feel like there's maybe like two a month, maybe four times a month you could never get a legendary from it you know and granted i'm saying that from the ninja block account who on it was technically my second summon pool summoning i got uh a hefrak so you know I, <laughs> it, it, you can get really really lucky and that's part of the fun of the game so i i don't know not a big fan of it 
I think it's good for spenders, and I respect that. Like, I, I, I don't appreciate any system where there's no mercy. I don't think that's fair. I don't think that's okay. So I am glad that they went ahead and introduced one. I wish it was a little more free, more free to play friendly, but you know they got to do. Uh, they want to make their money, so you know. And always remember, here's the thing that I always got to remind myself. I love this game, whether I'm paying it or free to play. But if it wasn't for those whales, this game may not exist, right? So they're keeping the company in business and they're giving me a game that I can play. And I enjoy it free to play just as much as I probably would if I was whaling out. In fact, probably more so because if I was whaling out on this game, I would probably hate the amount of money that I would be putting into it. So, um, I would, you know, every day I'd be looking, oh man, what, what other area I could put this into a, you know, a new computer, a car, blah, blah, blah. Right. So, okay, let's move on now and talk about the other stuff coming out. So if you haven't already taken a look at the news, um, the Asgard divide, they gave a sneak peek about it. A couple of things that I want to talk about. Uh, Loki seems interesting. I think Loki is going to be really good for my free-to-play ninja account, especially. Um, he's not yet in the game, and I, I don't really... Like I said, I haven't pulled up any of the of the stuff, but they're all going to be Barbarians, so Barbarians going to get an even bigger roster. Um, from what I'm hearing from other content creators, I think Thor will be the fusion that will be associated with this, which I think will be good. I think, if you, I think Thor in, himself is going to be good. Um, I like what Loki has to offer, but the other champions looked pretty interesting. Um, I don't know so much about Odin, but I think Freya looked pretty cool. So we'll see when all of that comes out. But the one thing I wanted to talk about and the, the, the driving force behind this video is this right here. Make sure I'm not blocked. Okay. So, Roadblock, can you offer some input? My clan has seen the new sneak peek, and we're all kind of scared because the new boss looks super tough to deal with at higher stages. So, probably. The react. So, one thing I really dislike about the dungeon is the fact that you can get regular gear from it. They kind of made it sound like you would only get pinpoint gear. Um, the fact that you can get regular sets too i think i saw crit damage in there and some other sets that like that's upsetting to be honest with you i'm very disappointed that they're diluting it and giving us other sets so we still just have to spend a massive amount of energy in this dungeon um i'm not thrilled about that I, you know i guess if you're just getting pinpoint it would be great but the pinpoint set itself while good, I don't know that it, it's a must-have. Um, so, regarding whether or not your clan or you as a, you know, you viewer, not necessarily Kingpin here, but any viewer, anybody watching this video, uh, is going to be able to push this dungeon at the highest levels or anything like that. First of all, a strategy will come out. Okay, we don't know the mechanics, at least not the specific mechanics yet. We know the the abilities of Odin, but a strategy will come out. People will say, oh, okay, do this, do that, and then that's what we're all going to do. I mean, we've seen it time and time again. Let me go over to a different account very, very quickly. We've seen it time and time again, right? Everybody, when Sand Devil came out, everybody was like, oh my god, how do we do this? What do we do? This doesn't make any sense. And then Godseeker and X came out, right? So a Godseeker and X. This is my free-to-play account. I'm not even a year in yet, and I'm already farming highest level of, of Sand Devil Stage 25, right? Because somebody found, oh, Godseeker works in here. You could pair them with New Ninja, other HP burn champions, right? And then Phantom Shogun Grove, this would be the wrong account to show you, but Phantom Shogun Grove, they also, sorry for that little sound effect there. Um, oh boy. The This is the joy of having uh, 
several accounts open at once sometimes on a computer that's several years old. And again, here, you know, we figured, uh, you know, what? I'll just go ahead and do it. It's fine. So all rare team stage 25, we figured it out, right? We solved it. Is it going to be solved very quickly? Uh, is it going to potentially require some really good champions to complete this new dungeon? Um, possibly. We just don't know yet. But when we do, well, cool. We're going to figure it out. And we're going to do the, the best we can, farm it at the highest possible stage that we can, and move forward. So I'm excited about it. The gear, I think, is unique. Um, and I want to talk about the gear a little bit. So the, the gear is basically like a faster but lower accuracy perception set. Uh, again, I don't have any reference materials for you guys, and I apologize for that. Usually I try to be a little more prepared, I'm trying to squeeze this in a very narrow window. But um, if we look at perception, so perception has 40 accuracy at 10% speed on a two set. The, the new one has 20 accuracy, but 10% speed um, in the first, I think it's six pieces and then the full nine piece gives you an additional 12 percent speed and then four stacks of intercept so i also want to explain because i didn't realize it until watching watching the podcast yesterday where somebody pointed out like the purpose of this gear is to bring back buff strippers that are currently not meta they may be, you still may be using them because you may not be running into high levels of polymorph, but in the high, high levels, everybody has polymorph on, right? And obviously Armand's is stunning. So if you have intercept, what's unique about intercept is that it blocks hard crowd control, including polymorph. This is very good. So if you go up against a team, and you want to use a Madame Saris, for example, who removes all buffs and then places a decreased defense and decreased attack, she can do that and Intercept will prevent her from getting Polymorph. Now, do you need four stacks of it? No. I don't think... I think that's uh, unnecessary overkill and irrelevant to the concept. Uh, I think a four-piece version of this set will be just fine to do that to to bring back these champions that do buff stripping and not risk them getting polymorphed um is where i really think the the value is and i want to take a look at the blessing as well do, 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 do. Has a chance of placing a sheep debuff on enemy champions, but whenever they place debuffs on this champion, or when an enemy removes or steal buff, steals buffs from them, occurs once per enemy turn, this debuff cannot be blocked or uh, placed on bosses, right? So, champions under sheep. Yeah, so basically, your debuffers and your strippers. It sounds bad to say that that way, but they have a better chance of getting their abilities off without the, they themselves being polymorphed, um, while also giving way more speed, which I think is good too, because the meta right now is very speed focused. So you can now take your champions that would be doing these effects and giving them a little bit more speed and a little less accuracy because you can find that accuracy elsewhere, right? You can find it from an accuracy chest. You can pair this set with other perception gear or accuracy gear or um, the new set uh, from Siege, if I can remember what it's called. Feral. I remembered it right before I saw it, I swear. Um, you know, this one, each piece... I mean, one piece of it's given 40 accuracy, right? Three pieces, you're getting 40 accuracy. So you can definitely pair this up with some of that. Now, the ultimate thing is it doesn't solve stone skin, but that's not the goal of this gear set. This gear set is not meant to solve stone skin. This gear set is meant to allow you 
to use a normal team without fear of being, or I say normal, but a, a, a traditional team, we'll say that. There is no normal team, but a traditional, like, buff, strip, debuff team and not be afraid of a six-star polymorph locking down your champion and preventing any of, of what you're trying to do. So I think it's an interesting set. I don't think you need it in nine piece. I also think a very unique part of the set is because one piece of it gives, or is it one or two pieces? I think it's two pieces that give speed. You can now get speed via accessories, which was pointed out on the podcast, um, outside of the banner. And so I think that's really important. Um, to be able, if you get two pieces on a faction for it, you put those two pieces on somebody you want to be very, very fast on your account and you've got access to more speed, right? So I, I it remains to be seen, but the, the point that I'm trying to make is I don't think this is like super hardcore necessary if you don't have this gear you're never gonna win arena again i don't think it's like that at all um it's good for your debuffers it's good for your buff strippers but i don't necessarily think that it's going to break the current system of of the game um it counters the polymorph from our mons it counters the stun but not the turn meter steal so he can still go infinite and steal your turn meter if you don't get stunned i mean i run into it all the time an armiger that's just or not armiger uh armands that's way faster than all of my teams and i just can't do anything you know i run into those teams i don't think it's going to change anything um necessarily i could be wrong about that you know i do think it's going to be a big thing that we're going to see in the meta i I think it's going to allow some more play from from previous champions that have, have been taken out of the meta. Like, it's my understanding that not a lot of people run Madame Ceres anymore because she's just going to get polymorphed. And then you don't get the effect that you want out of her. Well, put her in this set. Now she's viable again. And so that's the big change, I think, that, that I'm seeing. It's the same reason why a lot of people... I, uh, this is this is stuff I'm getting from videos because I don't even have Ramatu, but that was another reason why people weren't running Ramatu. Um, because he would remove all buffs before using this, and he would just get polymorphed. So now he's more viable, which then in turn increases Tiox. Right? You can now use Ramatu and Tiox if you put Ramatu in that gear so I, yeah there's a lot of i like it i think it's a good change um but don't be afraid of this dungeon don't say oh well i can't farm it at the highest levels what are we gonna do you, we're gonna fall out of relevancy that's not that's not that's not true at all that's not true at all that's like saying that if you can't win siege that you i mean it's perception gear right you still have access to perception gear you still have access to accuracy gear you still have access to speed gear you know they're just because if you're really scared that this dungeon is going to ruin the game for you, I don't think it is that at all. I really don't. Um, and and even if you are able to do the high levels, you could get crit damage gear. You may not get the gear, the pinpoint gear that you're looking to get in the first place. Um, and honestly, you're probably not even going to be farming it at stage 25, I would assume stage 20 is still going to be the more relevant stage to to farm it on just to get more opportunities at at the set i don't know that i'm sure that more videos will come out by more knowledgeable creators that are going to tell you exactly how much energy to use and how to run it and everything like that so um i hope that answers your question that you had um but again if you guys have any issues you have any comments you have any objections to what i'm saying feel free to let me know in the comments i i'm very receptive to feedback i mean on my free to play ninja account i wasn't going to go with uh venom age but i did go with venom age right because of your guys's suggestions and um you know like it it can give me a lot of, and by the way, like that, that sounds like I didn't know how good Venomage was. Like this is my like fifth 
free to play account. Like I know how good Venomage was. I was just looking to get more value out of this particular ability, if I'm honest with you guys. But that's a discussion for another set of video, another uh, another video on another day. Um, I just wanted to make this video to kind of respond to that particular post um, and say, like, you know, it, 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 it may be hard. Sand Devil was incredibly hard when it first came out. We will get that figured out. We just got to play. But I don't think it's going to be game-breaking if you can't do it um, at a high level. Maybe you get to stage 20. Maybe you get to stage 16, right? You'll probably have good odds there to get reasonable gear. I'm assuming the odds are going to be similar to what you would get from a normal dungeon stage one to stage 25 i'm assuming the odds are going to be the same so who knows should be fun i'm excited i think we're gonna have uh some pretty interesting events coming up some pretty interesting opportunities to get these champions i don't uh i haven't looked in depth at their kits so maybe i will bring out another video if you want me to do another video i don't usually do videos like this but but i specifically wanted to answer that question if you'd like to see more videos like this let me know in the comments let me know on discord um you know and and i'll put more stuff out like this we used to do a series way back in the day called question block um I kind of discontinued it because it wasn't gaining the viewership that my other videos were, but maybe I bring that back and we start going back and I start answering comments and questions on a, on a weekly basis. I don't know. You guys let me know. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for your support. Um, if you like my content, please consider subscribing. It is the best way to support my channel. I'm trying to grow this into something special. <laughs> and the more support I get from you guys, I don't know if that came across the mic, but that that like <gasps> breath <laughs> when I tried to inhale was very, very troubling. Um, yeah. If you guys can subscribe, it really helps me out. Helps me grow the channel, helps me gain some more notoriety within the community so that other people will want to work with me in the future and do more fun things like that. So as always, thank you for watching and I will see you on the next video. Take care.